so. So the last thing we did is, uh, I forgot. <coughs> Product topology, okay, for arbitrary products, and also box topology. Both are uh, interesting ones, okay. Product topology is important, but box topology is interesting to compare. So we start uh, uh, still another, this is the metric topology. So we talk about metrics a little bit. So what is a metric that you know from analysis, so I repeat. So a metric, <coughs> on, a set, on a set x, x, is a function, so metric, that's a, a metric is a function, d, distance from x cross x to the reals. So the distance is the real, real value, such that, so if you think a little bit, then you have the three conditions. One is uh, the distance uh, should be positive. So the first is the distance between any two points should be posit positive. And zero only if they are equal to the points. No, the distance is equal. D x y is equal to zero if and only if only if x x equal to y. That's reasonable for distance. No. The second condition is uh, symmetry. So the d d x y is equal to d y x for all x for all points. So the distance doesn't depend in which direction you go. No. So this is symmetry. It's symmetric, the distance. And the third one is the triangular triangle inequality. So this has a dxy, well, whatever, xy plus well, let me write it this way. DXZ is small or equal to DXY plus DYZ. This is a, these are the three conditions of a metric, no? Okay. So this is a triangle inequality. Triangle inequality. So we define the open ball given epsilon for epsilon bigger than zero. This means real number, of course, as usual. Uh, we have that the ball, this is the open ball, with respect to the metric D, that's the metric, uh, with center X and radius epsilon. So this is open ball, open ball, with center, that's what it is, center X, X, and radius epsilon. So what is it? Well, these are all points. Y in X such that the distance between X and Y is smaller than epsilon. That's the open ball. So this is the notion of open ball. B, D, X, epsilon. Okay? If the metric is clear, sometimes we will not write the D. But if you have different metrics, then we have to write, of course, which one do we mean. So this is an open ball. And then we have uh, the collection of all open balls, B, 
equal let b so i will not yes b uh, all open balls so bd x epsilon and now we take all possibilities so x for all points and all epsilon bigger than 0 and so this is a collection of all open balls with all centers, all ra uh, radius, radii, radius, whatever. What? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's not the language course anyway. <laughs> so as you suspect, it's the basis, OK? It's a basis. We have to prove something here. It's a basis for a topology uh, on X. And this is a metric topology. Of course, metric topology associated to the given metric D. Okay? If you have two metrics, we have maybe two different, maybe the same topology associated to the uh, given metric D. So this is a metric topology. If we have a metric, we have a topology associated to it. OK? <sighs> we have to, well, there's a little lemma which uh, is very easy. But anyway, let's write it. If y is in the open ball around x with radius a, with radius epsilon, then there is then well, this is then there uh, there is a delta bigger than zero such that the open ball around y with radius delta is contained in this one. It's contained in BD x epsilon. OK. So the proof is by picture, no? Proof. So what do you have? You have, well, open ball might look different. No? We give examples, of course. But uh, so we have the center x. And we have radius epsilon. OK? That's B, the open ball, with center x and radius epsilon. Now we have a point here, a y. And so we want to find an open ball which con uh, around y, which is contained in this larger one. No? This is the point y, OK? And it's clear what we have to take for the radius, OK? The, uh, the largest possibility is, of course, so that delta, let delta from the picture, what will be delta will be epsilon minus the distance between x and y. And that should work if this picture is correct, OK? In fact, it works. It's always a triangle inequality, you know? So uh, we have to prove this inclusion, right? Then we take a point here and prove it's also here. The standard z theory, OK? Take a point. Let z, well, maybe I'll write here. So let z be a point where b, d, y, delta, no? B, D, Y, delta. And then what we are interested in is that this should be also in B, D, X, X, epsilon, X, epsilon, right? So we have to see what is the distance between Z and X, no? Between X and Z. It's symmetric anyway. So, and then we have the triangle inequality, no? We, can, we have Y. So it's D, X, Y plus D, Y, Z. That's exactly the triangle inequality. This is smaller or equal to 
We need some smaller at a certain point, no? So dxy, where's x? So this is smaller than epsilon, no? What, what, uh, sorry, I don't uh, This is smaller than delta, no? This is smaller than delta, no? And delta is what? Epsilon minus d. So this is equal to epsilon. Yeah, right. Yes. So this means that z. So this means that z is in B D. X epsilon. Okay. So you should write the steps, no? So what can I mean in exercises in proof? Okay, so this is a little lemma, and this implies then also that it's a basis. What do we have uh, 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 to prove for a basis? So B is a basis. So if you want a corollary, B is a basis to proof. There are two conditions, no? The first one is trivial. Each point is in some basis element. No? It takes a center, no? The center is always in the ball, no? So we have the second one. I make picture. So we have two basis elements. Uh, this is B, D, X1, Epsilon1. And we have a second one. Only picture, B, D, X2, Epsilon2. And then we have a point at intersection, OK, which is uh, Y. <coughs> and then apply two times the lemma, no? Uh, y is in this and in this one. And so uh, you apply the lemma two times, and then you get what you want. So. The lemma implies, of course, that uh, uh, B, D, for some, there exists delta 1, delta 2, no? such that B, D, X1, delta 1 is contained in B, D, in, in what? Uh, sorry. X1 is contained in not x1, y. OK? BDY, delta 1 is contained in BDX1. Epsilon 1. Epsilon 1, yes. And BDY, delta 2, is contained in BDX2. Epsilon 2. But that's a concentrate of the notation. I mean, it's trivial, but one has to write, OK? And then you take delta as the minimum, of course, of delta 1 and delta 2. And this then implies that B, Y, B, D, y, y, delta is contained in the intersection, in both, <coughs> which is clear here. Now, you take one ball for this one, and you take the other one for this one, no? And you have to take the minimum. It's called in the BD X1, Epsilon 1. Intersection BD X2, Epsilon 2. So this is a proof. And this is a picture. Examples, not examples. Uh, first, a definition, which is an interesting definition. And uh, uh, so, definition. So, a, a topological. Now we have a topological space. A topological space, X, is 
metrizable. Well, if it's metrizable, it's clear. If there is a metric, if there is a metric D, on x such that, so I will prove it, such that, okay, such that uh, uh, a topological space x here for one, that uh, the metric topology, uh, so here, uh, uh, sorry, here for some time we may write xt, the given topology, okay? So x is a topological space, x with a topology t, okay? x equal xt. It's metrizable. It's like a metric D on X such that the metric topology associated to D is, uh, is equal to T, so the given topology T, such that the metric topology associated to D, to the metric D, of course, if there's a metric D on X, so it's a metric topology associated to D, is equal to the given topology. T on X. So this is metrizable. And it's one of the interesting problems of the most interesting problem to Apollo is the problem is problem the problem so given the topological space x no not given x uh, uh, find uh, necessary and sufficient condition sufficient Topological conditions, okay? Topological conditions. Find necessary and sufficient topological conditions Which uh, 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 such that the topological any topological space is such that uh, uh, well I'm, uh, <laughs> I have problems with English today. Uh, how do you know what here? Uh, 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 find necessary condition, condition such that uh, a topological space x, x is metrizable. Okay. It's not, I'm not, I'm not content. Such that uh, 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 topological space, any topological space, is metrizable. This, so we give example. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, 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 Interesting problem is the history of topology, okay, of general topology. Mm -hmm. Topological conditions, okay, which are sufficient, necessary, and also sufficient. So, so uh, let's let's give examples. Uh, well, so examples. So consider X a discrete space. So a discrete space means with a discrete topology, you know. X a discrete space. Discrete space means with a discrete topology, you know.
That's a topological condition, discrete, no? That's top purely topological condition, discrete, okay? Being discrete means that points are open. All points are open, no? All sets are open. All points are open. So is this metrizable or not? So D of x, y is equal? One yes, one, zero. One if x is different from y, no? And zero, of course, if x is equal to y. So this is a discrete metric, no? This is called the discrete metric. This is a discrete metric, which induces a discrete topology, OK? which induces the discrete topology. Why? Because uh, the, obviously the ball, uh, so this is D, OK? The ball around x in this metric with radius 1, what is that? It's just x. So this is open, OK, in the, in, in the topology, in the metric. So this means points are open. So this is clear, no? So discrete is, a, uh, being discrete is a sufficient condition, no, for spaces, OK? If it's discrete, it's metrizable, no problem, OK? But it's, of course, not necessary. I mean, that would be. <laughs> Strange, no? There are many spaces which are metrizable, which are not discrete, of course, no? Uh, R2, okay, the, the standard analysis. So then, coming from the other direction, here we have, uh, we found a sufficient condition, no? Being discrete. And now uh, X with indiscrete topology. Let's consider next indiscrete. So this is the first example, if you want. This is the second so example. Know, uh, yeah, right. So uh, what we know, so observation, so what you say is the following observation. If X is metrizable, then it's a lemma. X metrizable implies X Hausdorff. X metric, okay? Metrizable and metric, then you can use uh, uh, in a similar way, no? If it's metrizable, it's, there's a metric D, so it's a metric space, okay? The metric is not unique, but the topology, okay? So a Hausdorff proof. That's again our, our lemma, no? No, no. So by picture again. So we have. Two different points, Hausdorff, no? X and Y. And then we have to find disjoint neighborhoods, and what we take is the distance and half, no? Then this is sort of this and this. So they should be disjoint, okay? So we take, uh, uh, so the point is that, that the point is that the ball uh, X is metrizable. So we have a metric D, metrizable, okay? It's always D. Uh, around X with radius. So what, what we say here, what should be the radius? The distance between X and Y, Y delta, epsilon. Over 2, no? We half the distance, okay? So epsilon intersection B, D, Y, Epsilon. This is empty. That's two, okay? 
So if you have to prove this, this is an exercise also, no? If you have to prove, you have to write something, no? How to write that? Well, here maybe, what is the easiest? By contradiction, no? That's the easiest. In this case, contradiction is the easiest. In general, maybe it's not so much. Suppose, so the, what you write is this, more or less. Suppose Z is a point in B, D, X, Epsilon. Unfortunately, one has to write something in a reasonable way, in an organized way always. No? That's an important point for, for general topology, okay? Not computations, but uh, 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 so intersection B, D, Y, Epsilon. And so this means this is not empty, okay? So you find a point. Suppose Z is a point in the intersection which is not empty. Once you write this, then now the proof is okay, okay? You, you have to start in a good way always, no? To, to write the proof, no? To start with the right thing. That's not uh, so easy, no? Uh, 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 because one, one has a, not a good order sometimes with the arguments, no? One starts uh, uh, so a mixture of, of hypothesis and, and what should be proved. So one has to concentrate on that. That's important, okay? Uh, to, to for mathematical style, no? not so. Once you have a start in the right way here, yeah, then it goes almost automatic. No, we want a contradiction anyway. So, uh, uh, so the distance between x and y is smaller or equal distance between x and z. You compare by this third point. No, so you have uh, this situation. where you have a point here, no? This is Z. And then something goes wrong here, no? This is triangle. So the distance p plus uh, distance ZY, which is uh, uh, smaller, so uh, distance, so this is XY over two epsilon, no? Uh, uh, two epsilon. That was epsilon, two epsilon, epsilon plus epsilon, no? But this is equal to, what is epsilon plus, uh, two epsilon is dxy, right? That's a nice contradiction, no? <laughs> dxy is smaller than dxy. Okay, so contradiction. So this x is metrizable, so it's Hausdorff, okay? Sorry, so you say again. Equal zero, zero, the distance. And your five, Well, I don't understand what you want to say. This is a contradiction, no? Contradiction, whatever is a sign for contradiction, okay? And your time, uh, the distance, x and y, equal zero. No. No, yes, but it's too complicated. I don't like that. Here you have dxy is smaller than dxy. No, 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 no. That's a contradiction. Okay? The, you, uh, for the order, that's the real order. You don't have that x is smaller than x. Okay? So here we have the contradiction. <coughs> But don't make it too complicated, okay? Here you have dxy is smaller than dxy. And that's... If we have uh, zero? Z uh, zero is not less than zero. Zero is not less than zero. Zero is equal to zero. No, no, it's not a question of zero. Right? Zero is not smaller than zero. No, no real number is smaller than another re a different real number, okay? Uh, it's the same real number, sorry, okay? That's part of the, okay, of the axioms for, for, for order, okay? We never have x is smaller than x, okay, for any order. That one has to impose, okay? That's what we wrote for order. x is never smaller than x, no? If it, we want this, then we, this means smaller. This means smaller or equal, okay? And this means equal, okay? And this is really smaller, okay? 
And the, uh, you never have x smaller than x for any order, OK? Obviously, not for the real order. No? If you have different, you see the order, OK, for the reals. Then it's clear. But for any order, it, uh, you have this axiom that it's never smaller. x is never smaller than x, OK? So it's not a question of 0. You say 0 is smaller than 0? No, we can't have <laughs> no. What? We, we also can't have 0 because x and y are different. Yeah, it's not 0 anyway. He wants to say they, it's, it's 0 now, and then they are equal. And that's a contradiction. That's what he wanted. No? Yes. He wants to conclude it must be 0, and then they are equal, and then it's a contradiction. But the contradiction is here already. No? So it's better to finish once you. Yes. So zero is a strange number. Then, no, if you think zero is, could be smaller, zero is very small. But well, anyway. <laughs> so ah, the indiscrete, uh, the indiscrete topology. So what? What is the answer? It's not. Yeah, that's almost the answer. That's almost the answer. Almost the answer. But there are always these uh, uh, nasty special cases. So you have to be. The real correct answer is no, that's if correct. If it doesn't contain uh, on one Yeah, right. If it has, yeah. that's what one has to say. No, yeah. if it has at least two points, then it's not Hausdorff. Okay. So if uh, x is discrete, x in discrete space, this is. Uh, Uh, so how to write? It's Hausdorff if it's one point, of course, no? But it's also discrete, discrete and discrete at the same time. Sorry? If it contains just one point, then it's also discrete. It's also yes, discrete. yes, of course, yes. In discrete space, uh, 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 it's not how uh, well in, to write in a good, in a reasonable way. It's not Hausdorff, except if x. Has only one point. Let's let's write. Has only one point. That's not very interesting space with one point. No, that's also discrete. And there's only one topology. Anyway, so now we found a what condition? A, a necessary condition. Okay. Being Hausdorff is necessary for being metrizable. Being discrete is sufficient. Okay. The discrete space is Hausdorff, but they're very far, no? these two conditions. Okay? On one end, discrete. On one end, uh, uh, on the other end, uh, well. OK. Other examples. Now, this, we have the standard examples. We should talk about the standard examples also in this context. We come back to this uh, uh, problem. That's one of the interesting problems. <clears throat> so uh, the standard space, of course, is uh, Rn. So let's consider Rn. Rn, uh, this analysis, OK? So we have the metric. So it's the norm. We have, uh, if we have a point x equal x1, xn in Rn, I define two metrics. Well, maybe three. If you turn the point in Rn, then we have the norm, no? The norm. That's the square root of x1 square plus, plus xn square. In fact, uh, uh, we have the standard sc uh, scalar product, OK? And this is uh, x, x, OK? This is a standard scalar product on our end. Now. This is a standard scalar product. On our end, which I didn't write, but if you uh, and then to any scalar product you have a norm, right? And uh, uh, this is a norm, uh, uh, Pythagorean norm, right? It's Pythagoras, no? The length of uh, in R two, this is yes. Okay, and uh, and uh, uh, so you define the distance from R n times R n to the reals 
this is dx x y. So x is x1, xn, y is y, of course. So what you take is, uh, that's the definition. Uh, uh, you take x minus y and the norm. So in other words, that's, that's the uh, uh, x1 minus y1 square plus xn minus yn square. And then you have to take the square root. This is so this is a, uh, the Euclidean metric, OK? This is a Euclidean metric. This we call the Euclidean metric. That's always, no? That's interesting uh, 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 in mathematics. Now you have a scalar product, then you have a norm, and then you have a metric. Well, of course, you have to prove. I will not prove. This is analysis, no? So this is a metric, OK? There are also conditions for norm, which I didn't say, no? But uh, this is a metric, OK? And, and the, the, the problem is uh, a triangular inequality, OK? Which is not immediate, OK? But this is analysis. So I will not go. We, we are doing here topology. Concentrate on this. So uh, uh, this is a metric. So this, the Euclidean metric, and this is a metric. And I will not prove this. Well, it's almost trivial now. For, for the first two, it's trivial. And then the triangle inequality. So what is the ball here? That, uh, 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 the Euclidean metric. D. What, what is it called, by the way? It's a name. No special name. So the ball is here. It's, uh, uh, that's a standard. Uh, this is a Euclidean metric now. Okay. And so we can make uh, 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 this is really in, in uh, x. We are in R2, of course, here now, and epsilon. So this is the round ball in R2. And then in Rn, it's. <coughs> this is a Euclidean metric. On our, uh, so we have the uh, topology, OK? Uh, uh, so the standard topology in Rn, which is that? We defined the standard topology on Rn. We defined maybe for R2, OK, is the uh, uh, topology generated by the Euclidean metric, or equivalently, the product topology, okay, where R has a, R has a standard topology. These topologies are the same. The standard one then is a topology generated by the Euclidean metric. which is equal, or equivalently, which is equal to the product topology, OK? Which is equal, however. So you can define it in this or in this way, which is equal <coughs> to the product topology. Product topology. On R cross R, n times, no? On R times times R. Where R is a standard topology, no? <clears throat> the standard topology uh, is generated by open intervals, if you want. Open inter but open intervals are balls with the Euclidean metric on R, OK? You take the center of the interval, and then you have the radius, OK? So, so open intervals in R are open balls respect with respect to the Euclidean metric. Is that clear? Yes. So the interval from A to B in R, real interval, this is the ball. So we have the Euclidean metric, right, on R. Around what is uh, A, what is the center? A, A, A plus A plus B. 
a plus b over 2. One has to also here to concentrate. What is the radius? B minus a, b minus a over 2. So this is an open ball, OK? Open ball. So it's the same topology also here. It's a standard topology general principle. So we have to prove here something by uh, the proof, by picture. So I make proof, OK? So we have, let's do it for R2, OK? I make picture. So we have to prove that uh, uh, we have two topologies, the product and the Euclidean metric topology, OK? Uh, so uh, let's start with the product topology. What is the basis for the product topology? Open times open. And we can take a basis for R. So we take open interval times open interval. That's the easiest. So this is open interval times open interval, OK? This is a basis element for uh, a product topology okay, on the reals, right? That's OK. Or we can take open times open, but we can restrict to a basis. And the nice basis of R are open intervals. So it's open interval times open interval, OK? And then we apply the lemma, no? So we want to, uh, we, uh, we have two bases, no? This is a basis, a basis for product topology. Well, on R2 here, but it's the same for Rn. Basis for product topology, OK? These are open rectangles, no? And then we have to take a point, any point. And then we have the second basis. That's the basis B, OK? The open balls. And then we have to find an open ball which contains this and it's contained in this, OK? And uh, uh, the op now it's clear you go, in some sense, you consider the distances to the, uh, these distances, no? And you take the minimum, OK, of these distances to the, to the uh, and then that, this ball is OK, OK? So this is the ball. And so this picture shows that uh, the, which topology is finer? The, 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 no, sorry, this implies that the metric topology is finer than the, this implies the metric topology. Yes, the metric topology is finer. Equivalent is not the right word for topology. Equivalent is not a good word. Equal, no? Equal. Yeah, equal. Equivalent. Equal so the metric topology is finer than, than the product. Topology on R2, no? This picture, this is a picture. And then we have a picture for the other thing. So then we start with the basis element for the metric topology. And we take any point. So here's the center. We take any point. And now we have to find an open rectangle, right? Well, if. Yeah. So we can take the radius if you want, and then what is the efficient way to uh, to? Uh, no, I'm tired. And uh, in any case, it's clear that by the lemma we have also this. No. And now we can take uh, 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 rectangles here. And this is not the center, no? Now it's the center. I wanted to find the, the, and now, of course, you find here open rectangles. Uh, but, but I wanted to find the optimal. The, well, maybe it's not. That's OK, OK? So this implies uh, the, uh, what does this imply? The uh, uh, product is finer is finer than the metric. OK? 
okay? So they are equal. And this is an exercise, this, this lemma, okay? You have two bases now, and the one is finer than the other one. If given a, a basis element of the other one, a point, you should find the basis element of, of this topology, which contains the point, is in contact. No? This we have applied two times, okay? One in this direction, one time in this direction. Okay. But of course, there are many different topologies, uh, 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 not topologies, metrics on Rn. So another one is uh, this one. This is called the row from Rn times Rn to R again. And now we define rho of x, y, x, y as before. Uh, so this is maximum, maximum uh, of x1 minus y1, xn minus yn. Okay. It's a metric. I will not prove that. It's a metric. This is a metric. This is even still easier than the Euclidean, okay? Because there you have this uh, square root now for the triangle inequality. It's not so pleasant, the square root. Here you have just this and this. So it's a metric. And this is called, uh, this, uh, in the book, it's called the square metric. The square metric. Y square metric. But I prefer uh, to call it the maximum metric, okay? Or maximum metric. It's the same. Just names. I, I think uh, maximum metric. It's clearer what, because it's a maximum, okay? That's a maximum metric. On Rn. So what? So what is uh, uh, the ball now? Like that's, it's a square. Yeah, that's square. That's why it's called square metric, right? So what you take is, uh, uh, we are in R, let's take R2. Oh, we make picture in R2, of course. So we, have, uh, we want the ball, uh, rho. This is rho. Rho, sorry. I, I, uh, it's not delta. Delta seems D, no? Here I wrote, okay, <laughs> I was thinking of D, delta, no? But it's rho, the square metric. In the book it's called, so my memory, just the name. So rho. I don't know why rho, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So uh, around x, with radius epsilon, no? So let's see what it is. Uh, uh, <coughs> so it's... Uh, So you have epsilon, epsilon, epsilon. That's very small, but okay. You go epsilon in each direction, okay, and then you have the square, okay. So this is square. Epsilon in this direction, epsilon in this direction, epsilon in this, and epsilon in this. No. And in R n, you have the same. You go in epsilon in all directions. So it's not a square. It's a cube or it's a hypercube. No. But uh, it's called square metric, because this is a square. And now you have to, so uh, this is, by the way, a special case of a rectangle, no? So it's, it's uh, li almost like the uh, product, uh, basis for the product topology, no? Except it's, it's a little bit more special, no? But it induces the uh, same, to, uh, the standard topology, no? You make the same kind of picture, okay? I mean, you can compare with the product. Or with the Euclidean metric, no? But it's the same, no? Except here, this seems already a square, okay? And, well, anyway, so uh, the maximum which induces, which induces the standard topology on our end.
So this is SV4. And then you can vary, no? You can take other stuff, no? You can take, uh, well, maybe we can take the sum of the distances or whatever, no? And then you get other kinds of pictures, no? But they, in general, have the, uh, uh, induce the same topology always, okay? If you, you can play around and define many metrics, which, uh, uh, but in general, they define all the standard topology, okay? And now uh, comes an interesting point because, so uh, question, now we, yesterday, R omega, no? This is R times R. This is a product of reals and how many countable, okay? Real sequences, R, we introduced yesterday, R omega, no? Is metrizable. That's the name. So Rn is uh, metrizable, no? We have the Euclidean metric, okay? We have the square metric. We have many metrics which we use, okay? No R omega is metrizable. And that's an interesting question, okay? This is the next case, no? Rn, finite product, and now we have infinite product. So we make it a little bit... Uh, so we want to generalize these metrics, no? The, but uh, uh, of course, to generalize the Euclidean metric is not so well. You can generalize, but uh, you need convergence, no? Because you have the sum, no? Okay, and and uh, the sum, if it's infinite, is not so good. So you need uh, uh, factors, with, so you have convergence. And what what seems to be easier is to generalize the square metric. Of course, you have infinitely many distances here now, no? so it may still be infinite now. But uh, you, any metric, so this is an interesting remark. So we will generalize this one, the square metric, okay? This is a maximum metric, and now we will have a sup, supremo metric, okay, on our omega. However, uh, it should not be infinite, okay? So what we have to do, we have to cut the metric and to bound it, okay? That's no problem. So uh, uh, that's easy. This is before. So, uh, uh, lemma. If D from x, x to R is a metric on x. Then also, and now it's called D bar, yes. Then also D bar from x, x to R. And now we have to define what d bar is. So d bar of x, y is equal. So we take the distance d, x, y. We take the minimum, sorry. Minimum, OK. So we take the, d, the distance which we have and Zero, minimum, then it would be zero, no? The minimum, zero is not so good. <laughs> one. One. Okay? So what is this? We cut the metric D at one. If it's bigger than one, then it's always one. If it's smaller than one, then it's the original distance, so. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, is minimum. So this is, uh, 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 the metric D cut at 1, at the point 1, OK? We say we don't want anything larger than 1, OK? Here we cut. Then we take 1 always, OK? Then uh, uh, also D bar minimum is a metric on x. And this is called the bounded metric associated to D. 
Because now it's one is the maximum, no? This is bounded. So this is always smaller or equal to one, okay? I cannot write this here, but this is smaller equal to one, of course, always. Is the metric on X the bounded metric? Associated to D. It's very easy to prove that this is metric, okay? However, uh, what we want, so it uh, uh, goes on, uh, uh, is the metric on X, the bounded metric, uh, which induces the same topology as D. So the topology is the same. This bounded metric induces the same topology as D. This bounded metric. This bounded metric induces D bar induces the same topology on X as D. So why is that? Uh, uh, informally, the, the small balls are equal, no? So we can write this since the ball d bar x epsilon is equal to b d x epsilon if yeah less or less equal less or equal is also okay no if epsilon is smaller or equal to 1 okay also equal one, because we take all points which are smaller, so it's the same metric then. No? And uh, 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 note that B, if epsilon is bigger than one, no? then the ball B, D, X, epsilon is what? It's X. Hmm? These are... If epsilon is bigger than 1, then all points uh, uh, have a distance uh, uh, at most 1, so they're here, okay? D bar, uh, D bar sorry, yes, D bar, thanks. D bar, of course. Okay, D bar, yes. Well, <laughs> this looks more than D bar. Okay, and the topology is determined by this by these balls. No, you then need. I mean, uh, what is open metric topology? Open set. If given any point, you find the ball, and you can make it as small as you want. Okay, and so that means that uh, uh, if you uh, know these ones, that's sufficient. These you don't. This is not interesting anyway. And the large one for D D except so not important for the topology. Okay. You can always take small, okay, small ones, as small as you want, because you just restrict, okay, and it generates the same topology. Okay, so that's good, no? So, and that means we can generalize the, uh, the now it's easy, we can generalize the uh, maximum metric, no? Because uh, now we take the super Premium, it's a maximum, but we have to make this, no? This, uh, we have to cut. Okay, so let's do that. So, uh, uh, definition. <coughs> so, we take any index set. We, we were talking about our omega, but we can take any index set, okay? Let J be any index set and consider 
and, con uh, uh, and consider so what our space is R j R j so R omega R j now R j so what what is this uh, uh, this is a product, if you want, ohms of reals. But how many? Okay, the index is this one now. So in other words, these are all points. Uh, uh, R, alpha is always called. No, alpha and J. Where R, alpha are reals. Okay? These are not sequences now. If, if J is uncountable, you cannot, uh, it's not a sequence, no? It's, it's, uh, it's not uh, in a good order, no? But anyway, it's this. Consider this set. And now define a metric. And now we can have a metric here. So this is, uh, I, I should use the name of the book. So this metric is, Rho bar, because it's uh, rho is a, a square metric, no? So, uh, uh, so we define rho bar from R j times R j to the reals. So now. So the points we write in this way, okay? So we have two points, x equal x alpha, alpha and j. Uh, so this is here and this is y equal y alpha, alpha and j. x alpha and y alpha are reals, no? Are just real numbers. So uh, uh, x alpha y alpha are just real numbers. That's here, no? Here's r, like reals. So uh, the distance is defined as, you sus as, you, as we said, no? So the distance between x and y, these are x and y, no? Now, we cannot take the maximum. We have not finitely many, but we take the soup. And in the book, maybe it's not written Yeah, it's not written this way. So how do you call this? Supremum, least upper bound, maybe. Least upper bound. So let's uh, uh, go least upper bound. So least upper bound. Sometimes sup, supremum, OK? Depending where, where, what language. So, so least upper bound or supreme, sup. Of what? Well, of the same as before. X alpha minus Y alpha, alpha and J. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, this, sorry. Uh, here, uh, I mean, this might be infinite, no? Of course. We are in the reals, the distance. So, so I have to cut at one, okay? So we have d bar, uh, uh, d bar of x alpha, y alpha. Sorry. I have to take where d bar is uh, the bounded metric on R, okay? Where? So I instead of the maximum, I take the least upper bound. Here I take the distances, okay? So what is this? This is the minimum of x alpha minus y alpha. This would be the Euclidean metric, no? x alpha minus y alpha and 1, cut at 1. We have to cut at 1. So this is this d bar here, OK? We cut at 1, the standard metric on the reals. So this is smaller equal to one now. Okay. So
So this has a name, two names. So this is called uh, uh, Roba. It's uh, the uniform matrix. That's the name of this matrix. Roba is, is called the, the uniform matrix. Uniform metric. Well, in this case, on RJ. And sometimes, uh, uh, so uniform metric. And sometimes I call this. I'm used to call it also the uh, the least upper bound metric. It's not so nice. It's so long. The sup sup metric. The supremo metric. Okay. Instead of the maximum metric, we have the supremo metric. Okay. Are you used to this word, supremum? Yes. yes. Or supremum metric. But in the book, it's uniform, OK? Supremum is, uh, 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 you recall, what is it, no? It's called the uniform metric. So this is used as a topology on Rj, OK? And the question is, what is the topology? So it's a uniform topology. But what is a uniform? Uh, uh, by definition, this induces the uniform topology. It's a uniform metric and uses a uniform topology. This induces uh, rho bar, induces the uniform topology. On RJ. So here's the definition of a uniform topology. So now we have three topologies, it seems. Maybe three. It's not so clear. Now, what are the three? We have the product topology. We have, in any case, we have the product topology, OK? And we said this is maybe the nice topology. We have the box topology. This maybe is a bad topology. <laughs> it's a bad guy, OK? And now we have a, 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 a third name, uniform topology, OK? So uh, a proposition. So we want to compare, of course, these three topologies. Now maybe this, this might resolve our problem, right? Uh, 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 we want to see if R omega with a product topology, that's the first, OK, the most important, is metrizable, no? Maybe this is a metric. But it turns out it's not the metric, OK? So uh, the proposition is proposition. Uh, the uh, uniform topology in RJ is finer than the product topology. Well, the uniform topology. Uniform topology, uniform topology on Rj is finer than the product topology. Strictly finer if J is infinite. Okay, if J is finite. All topologies are the same. The, the product, the uh, well, then it's the, the, the maximum. Now that we said already on R n, the the on R n, uh, uh, well, it's not exactly we have we have to cut here. No, that's uh, the only difference. But it's almost uh, like the uh, the maximum metric, right? The square metric, except we cut at one here. But that doesn't matter for the topology. So on Rn, the three topologies are the same. Uh, well, I will write. Strictly final if uh, J is infinite. 
And then as a remark, which is not part of the proposition, on Rn, the three top, uh, the uh, topologies, uh, on Rn, the product topology, they are all the same. The product topology, the box topology, well, one second, the product, that's too long maybe, the box, the product, box, and uniform topologies coincide, are the same, okay? Here we have just one. And that you should also, should be clear. We know already that, I mean, there's no difference between the product and the box here, okay? Open times open times open, finitely many, so we have no condition. And the uniform topology uh, is the uniform metric. That's a sub-metric, but here's the maximum metric, okay? Except we cut it one also, but for the topology, it doesn't matter. So they're uh, the same, these three topologies. On Rn, we don't... If J is infinite, then it's strictly finer uh, than the uh, uh, uniform is strictly finer than the product. Okay. And then we are not so much, much interested in the box topology. Okay. It's also not the box topology. Okay? The box topology is strictly finer than the than the uniform. So it's in the between the two. Then okay, in the middle. Yes. Have a, a matrix space. Every norm has its equivalence. Every norm, norm. What do we mean by norm? Uh, norm of. A well, so we we don't talk of norm. Uh, uh, just in. Yes. Well, this is in R N. A norm is something uh, uh, we didn't define. What is norm? No. If you have a, as I said, if you have a scalar product, you have a norm. But then there are the axioms for a norm. There are the axioms for a scalar product. There are the axioms for a norm. And then there are axioms for, for... So what is the question? If every metric comes from a norm... No, on, on Rn, uh, it is a, a finite. N is finite. Yes. What do you mean by norm? Just the, uh, the, the axioms of norm. We didn't define norm. No, they are not equivalent in general. In Aryan? Yes, I mean, uh, uh, well, maybe we are more familiar with scalar products, okay? In Aryan, is this the same? The norm, yes, if you have a scalar product, you have a norm. And the norm, determines the scalar product. That's linear algebra. That's not our, I don't want to talk. The norm determines the scalar product, okay? But they are, what, what is the question exactly? If all norms induce the same topology? Equivalent. What means equivalent? Every norm are equivalent. equivalent uh, what means equivalent? When we take uh, two norms, yes. uh, we have, uh, there exists uh, and, uh, you can compare. Yes, uh, then, yeah. So they, they induce the same topology also. Yes, then. Yes. But that's not our, uh, our, uh, uh, our subject here, okay? These are interesting questions, of course, no? I mean, if you have a scalar product, you have a norm, you have a metric. If you have a metric, do you have a norm? Do you have a scalar product? No, in general, okay? There are other conditions. But this is linear algebra. This is uh, not, not our, our, okay? Maybe analysis even more. So we, I, I didn't de uh, even define norm, okay? I defined on Rn, but I didn't say what are the axioms for norm in general, okay? What is a norm? So there are three axioms for norm, no? And, but that's uh, linear algebra. Don't, uh, uh, we will not want, yeah, okay. So let's prove this then, okay, proof. Well, it's easy, proof. Finer, first we have to prove finer, no?
So what means finer, uh, uh, what is the, the uniform topology is finer. So we should start with, uh, with a, a product topology, okay? So let, and we can start with a basis element, okay? Not with a general open set, because given a point, we anyway find a basis element, no? So let uh, uh, product u alpha, alpha in j, be a basis element for the product topology. So what does it mean? That means we are in the product topology, not in the box, okay? So that means that, uh, 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 so this implies u alpha is equal to r except for finitely many indices, no? Uh, let me call, give name, alpha 1, alpha n in J. However, uh, u alpha is open in R always, okay? u alpha open in R. That's product of open sets in the real It's open in the real Find it many in this alpha 1. u alpha is, however, open in the real Each u u alpha. Because if we don't have this condition, then we have the box topology, okay? Then that would be a basis element for the box topology, you know? If we forget this condition. Just U alpha open R, then we have the box topology. Arbitrary product of open sets is a box, okay? This is a product topology. And given a point, okay? And let, so uh, we take a point. Given a basis element, a point, we should find the basis element of the other topology. What is the other? The uniform, okay? So let, uh, uh, the point is called x, x alpha, alpha in j, be an element in this product. Okay. <clears throat> so we have to take care of these indices, alpha 1, alpha n, where we are not the whole space, or maybe, okay? For alpha 1, alpha n in J, so these are these indices, alpha 1, alpha n in J. Uh, uh, choose so anyway, here it's clear that x alpha is in u alpha, no? Clearly, no? And this is open in, in the reals. No, that's our situation, no? Although, so for, for this, choose uh, epsilon i, uh, how is it called? Epsilon i bigger than zero, epsilon i bigger than zero, such that the ball d bar, this is this strange metric on r, around x alpha i, Epsilon i. So this is, here we are in the reals, no? In one coordinate. And this is this metric, cut at one. Uh, it's contained in u alpha i. So this is, what is this? This is an open real interval, no? Open real interval. That's what it is. It's just a real interval, open. 
And of course, we have here x alpha i here, no? So we just choose an open interval around this, which is contained in u alpha i, okay? But we write it in this strange way, okay? Interpreting, uh, interpreting it as a, as a ball with respect to this metric, the interval, no? No problem, open uh, real interval. And epsilon the minimum. Let's take the minimum. Let epsilon be the minimum of epsilon one, epsilon n. So these are these n indices, one up to n. Then the claim is then then the ball around and now we have the other topology, no? The uniform topology, the uniform metric. Of course, x is in the ball around x. x is our point. And you take epsilon. This is OK. And this is contained in our product u alpha, alpha and j. This, we started with these basis elements, OK? Well, uh, if this is true, then uh, uh, we. You have to think one second about this, of course. It's contained here, no? Then uh, this, of course, then implies that uh, uh, the uniform is finer than the product. So this implies the uniform topology is finer than the product topology. So I will not write. Uh, first, I, let's see. So take a point here, y, OK? In this point. We have to prove it's here, no? And we have to check coordinate by coordinate, OK? So uh, uh, let uh, y be a point here in this ball, OK? So the distance between x and y is uh, smaller than epsilon. This is a sub matrix, no? That means that. Mm, no. No, no, it's not important. Here. Let, let's, let's see. Then we should find it. No, no. Yeah. Uh, and what? This is D bar. Yeah, this is uh, the bar. This cut this one. Oh, you can think of epsilon as small if you want, okay? If there are large values, then. Well, should I? That's not important. So take a point here, OK? Why? So why would be y alpha, no? Alpha and j be in this ball? x, epsilon. What does it mean? This means, of course, that the distance. I didn't want to write. Now I'm, I started to write. So it means, of course, that the distance is smaller than epsilon. So the distance, which distance? Rho bar between x and y is smaller than epsilon. No, clearly. That's okay. That's the definition. That means that. Now I go to these coordinates, OK? What, what is this distance? This is, uh, 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 what was it? The least upper, the soup, least upper bound of d bar x alpha. That's the definition, no? Alpha and j. So you take the distance in the coordinates, OK? And cut at 1. That's just the, 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 the difference, but cut at one, OK? Uh, and so that means that uh, what does it mean? That d bar. 
So the, the soup is smaller than epsilon. So d bar of, uh, now let's take our coordinates, x alpha i, y alpha i. These are alpha 1, alpha n, no? Is smaller than epsilon. The soup is smaller than epsilon, okay? So this must be smaller than epsilon. And epsilon is smaller what than epsilon i, no? Smaller equal. And this, of course, implies that this ball, BD bar, what do you want? So that means that, uh, sorry, this point, y alpha i is where? Is here, okay? What do I want to prove? Component wise, it's in, it's in, uh, it's here and it's u alpha i, okay? It's in u alpha i. At a certain point, <laughs> it's better not to write and to, to but one has to write, of course, okay? It's in u alpha i. i from 1 to n. So, uh, uh, first this and then this, no? Okay? First this and then this. For i equal 1 to n. For these coordinates, it's okay, okay? We are, uh, we have the right coordinates. We are here, okay? And for the other coordinates, we have the real. We have everything, so we don't care. It's anything is good, okay? So for alpha different from alpha one, alpha n. If we have another coordinate, okay, not one of these, then u alpha is what? R. And then of course this implies that uh, uh, x alpha is in u alpha also, okay? Because it's everything. So u alpha, so x alpha. No, no, y. We are interested in y, okay? Y alpha is in u alpha, which is no condition here, because it's everything, okay? <laughs> so I didn't want to write what I wrote, okay? So this is a proof that uh, uh, so this, all this implies this inclusion here, no? Okay? So this implies, now you can conclude that uh, B rho bar x epsilon is contained in product u alpha. So what, uh, it's very easy, no? We take a point here, we look at the coordinates, and we find them all here in the right u alpha, and then it's here, okay? So this is fine. We have two minutes because we have to prove strictly final, no? Well, that's like school. <laughs> so now we have to prove strictly final. And, and strictly final means they're not equal. So what we have to do, we have to find one open set, which is open in, uh, in which one, which is strictly finer, in the uniform, but not open in the uh, product. Yeah. Just one is sufficient. And the one which I write is B rho bar uh, 0, 1. Well, one is always uh, the largest, which is reasonable. It's open, it's obviously open in the uniform topology, no? It's a, it's a basis element, no? Right, that's a basis. But not open in the product, but not open. Why not?
So take any point here, whatever you want, okay? Take any point here in this wall, okay? And then take any basis element of the product topology which contains a point. Any basis element of the product topology, you know? Basis of the product, uh, we want to see that we don't find any basis element of the product topology. We cannot find which contains a point, maybe zero, maybe it doesn't matter which one, and it's contained here, okay? We don't find that. Why not? Because if you take a basis element of the product topology, for, since it's infi ah, infinite, infinite, strictly finer if J is infinite. Okay, so there's one coordinate, in fact, infinitely many, where we have the reals. But now you have the coordinate here, okay? Maybe zero is the point which we have, okay, zero. But in the reals, what is the distance which we can reach? In the reals, we can reach distance with whatever we want, okay? But we have cut at one, so we reach one. We get distance one in this coordinate. We get distance one. But this metric here is the uh, least upper bound, okay? It should be smaller than one, but we get one, okay? We get things arbitrarily large, then we cut at one. We get one as distance. And then the soup is equal to one, but not smaller than one. Here it has to be smaller than one, okay? This means smaller than one. Topology, but not open the product topology. In fact, again, what, what uh, is, uh, uh, there's not a single basis element in the product topology which is contained in this. That, that's again, so the, uh, it's very far from, okay? So that's maybe worse to write, in fact. In fact, not a single basis element In the product topology, of the product topology, is contained in this one. Zero one. So that means that the interior is empty again. Okay, it's very far from, from being open, this one in the so this implies also that the interior of B rho bar 0, 1 is empty in the product topology, okay? In the product topology. So it's very, very far from, from These topologies are very different, okay? The product and the uniform. So that was the first trial, no? Which didn't work. We don't know our omega still, okay? We, have, we found a new interesting topology, okay? Uniform topology. It's also not a box topology. That I, do. I should give uh, exercises, okay? And then collect. Did you write something? Yeah. I should, I don't know if I should do it with this. Or I, I write some exercises, okay? And again, I will give something which you should write very carefully and something where you should think or uh, only about because it's difficult to write, okay? Like this also, no? I mean, we can talk about it. I know it's late, but let me, let me also exercise. Page 111.8.30. Page 118, 6, and here now, so these have to be right, and, and uh, 7 only uh, the result. So I don't insist here, okay? Only, you should of course uh, think about that, no? Seven only the result, but otherwise, you concentrate on the other first, okay? But this is interesting exercise, so 
only the result. And then the page uh, 126, three. So th these are the four which you should write very carefully, OK? These four here, OK? And here you think also about something. There's a five, only result. This is an exercise for product and uh, box, and this is the same exercise for, for uniform. Okay, so they are very similar, these exercises, but somewhat difficult to write. And the last one is uh, 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 4B. Of course, also A, but it's not so pleasant. I mean, uh, 4B, only result. These are more, you should think about these exercises, okay? So these are uh, somewhat special, these exercises. You can do also 4A, but maybe you find that difficult. I mean, it's not so... Okay, you will see this exercise, okay? And you should think what happens. The sequences and, okay? So the important one are, which you should write very carefully are these, and here you should think and, and uh, try if you can get out the result, okay? In some way. 